Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to the kingdom, and welcome back to Vanilla Minecraft. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a few weeks now since I made a video on this world, and I have been missing it terribly. But I've been playing a lot on the uh, Exuma's Feed the Beast server, and learning that sort of thing, and due to my jobs, and I just don't have that much time, so I've kind of divided it up between doing that and uh, sleeping so I haven't really had much time to come on here and when I have I've just been collecting resources I haven't really been feeling like filming it so over the whole Christmas period in the last two three weeks I've been collecting up resources like crazy because I don't do anything that I really should show you on film so I've got a awful lot of resources that I've collected up the last few weeks um, to go towards my sky fortress. Got tons of glass. I filled up most of my chests with items, and uh, this one even got a whole massive ton of diamonds. I was expanding the strip mine and also collecting up a huge amount of lapis. And we're in 49 skulls now out of our 64, so we're nearly there. And also, my gunpowder supply has gone through the roof. That should keep going for quite a while. The storage system in the nether is really full. And there's a zombie there. You know what? I say no. So we're on the first 1.5 snapshot now. I changed over earlier today. And I've been playing with some of the updates for it. The buggy hopper, I not sure about yet. It's still work in progress like they said. Over here, it's night time for a reason, sorry about the rain, is the day night sensor. And this is a great thing, which I found I had to go very long way in the nether to get the quartz ores. So I got a huge amount of them and put them all back from end chest. I don't really want to go out there and mine them again, so I got something like seven stacks of ores or something with silk touch. Um, they do work with fortune, so that's why I've kept them like that. And these sensors need light, but see-through objects allow it to get the light. So in this case, there's no light getting in, doesn't work. But as pistons are still currently see-through blocks... Whoop. Oh, what happened there? Is it not night time anymore? It's not night time anymore, is it? Darn. Anyway, like that, as you saw at the beginning, it works. And that's a very important thing, because... I want to use it for a lighting system over here. For my new project that I'm going to be doing today, which I said I'd be starting a while ago. Never really got round to it. And I've got all this area, if I just pillar up. Let's go. So. This is a whole new area I've flattened out from the land and somewhere I've got the sand from as well. And I need to fill in all these blocks and I have been using lapis and I do have enough lapis to do um, all of it probably I've got quite a few stacks saved up for my ship mining along with my ton of diamonds and I could do that but I could also use the new daylight sensor to have lighting in the floor so it's only turned on during the night which could be pretty cool actually so I might take out some of this lapis and fill it up Basically all of this bit here is the new area, quite annoying with the torches, and this way it would actually probably reduce lag, because you wouldn't need the torches on all the time underneath the blocks. And no, it's just looking at the future, so in one of the snapshots they had it so that um, these were no longer see-through, and they said that they'll re-implement that in the light engine in 1.5. I really hope they don't do that, it's going to mess up a lot of things for me. I was testing all my contraptions around the world and everything I tested seemed to be working perfectly fine which is brilliant now they're on this new snapshot 1.5 and that's also why I haven't reloaded my textures on and that's just because we've got items in the game which I don't have the stuff for which I could throw in but while it's all new I thought I'll just keep it in this especially the nether walls and things I need to find where they were so we've got the trap chests, and this is going to revolutionise my storage system, as you have them next to each other. So I can have them like that, and you can have gigantic amount of storage, like so, which would be pretty cool. And I think I will be doing that in the storage system from the Nether. 
But also you may think how I'm going to change my storage system in the nether for the hoppers. And the answer to that is I'm not. Not really. The process of getting them from the AFK stream to the chests will be the same. I'll put them in myself. But I could always have it so that the chests that I put them in can then have hoppers underneath them and move them into the storage system. Problem is you get a limited amount of storage really from them. Um yeah. There are other ways of doing it, um quite a long amount of hoppers for it. But we'll see really I don't do anything like that until they finish the hopper, as it is still work in progress. And uh, be ashamed to do all that and then them to change it. And they said they're gonna might put in filter options and things for it, which would be brilliant. And then the whole systems that I've been seeing on YouTube so far will be irrelevant because they'll be automatically sorted anyway. So I'm going to wait and hold my breath on that. And I will include the hopper, I think, in this project just to collect up the wood from a tree farm. But first of all, I'm going to do some Minecraft science. So I'm back with you when I've got some results to show you. Oh, hey there, zombie. What's up? Weird. I guess there are quite a lot of bugs in 1.5 so far. He's not hitting me. I was AFK and he started hitting me a couple of times and then he stopped. Well, that's weird. So anyway, I'll be back while my testing's finished. I'm waiting for the trees to grow. So we're in my test world and we got to learn about how these trees spawn and how we can make it so we have a farm which has the requisites of whenever they spawn, when you cut them down, you always get the same amount of saplings back or more, on average anyway, statistically. You also have to have it so that they're as close together as possible while maintaining this level of saplings. And also, I want to have other layers in this farm, so all the different walkways are going to be like this, a light source and dirt. Now, depending on how much these spawn, you might depend on how far away each other needs to be. We'll go to that in a second. So all of the trees apart from the jungle tree have a 1 in 20 chance of dropping you a sapling. So if you break one of the blocks or one of the blocks you spawn, 1 in 20 chance of giving you a sapling. So in theory, on the statistical side, if you have 20 leaf blocks, then you'll get one sapling every time. So if you had a farm that had 20 leaves that were going to despawn over an area, be collected then you should always be able to maintain your sapling count or increase it. So if you look at this one I want to have my walkways like this and the requisites also you have to have light for the tree. Now we don't want this farm to grow any big trees so you need to be under 10 blocks high the actual layer but I think we can go a lot smaller than that. So we have to look at how many leaves are going to be over the floor so these ones would despawn on top of the earth and the pumpkins so we wouldn't actually get them this design, I'm going to have a tower of them basically of these long lines, I'm going to work out how I'm going to do it exactly and then all I'm going to do is cut down these leaves so I'm going to go through here and cut them down so you can ignore all of these ones here because these ones when they despawn they're likely to fall on top of here now these side ones may also come on top of here but the likelihood is that they won't so if I come along here and do that, you see they're already spawning. So if I grow another tree, and we look at the same thing, doesn't matter what height they grow, they should have about the same amount of leaves, as long as they don't grow to a big tree. Yeah, luckily it didn't grow to a big tree. So you're assuming you're forgetting all this middle row. You've got to count to 20 leaves, and then they would be enough. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So at that point you would have a 100% chance statistically of getting a sapling back and that's what we want but as you can see there's more leaves here than you need so I'm going to see if we can go even smaller Okay, so a little bit bigger this time, and what we want is to have trees next to each other, and we're assuming they'll always be at the same height, so that the leaves that overlap will always be destroyed. If they grow at different heights, you may get more 
leaves than you expect. We're only looking at worst case, so we grow on here. You see that these two layers overlap. So if you're looking at the individual tree, if you look at the module design, when they grow, these two leaves belong to these trees. So if I just label it, those two layers are for this tree, these two label <laughs> those two layers are for this tree, and so on. These will be meant to be destroyed by the next one. So if you look in these two spaces, you'll see if there is enough leaf blocks to give us one sapling, then it would be productive to have them that close. Now I'm not looking for a hundred percent saplings back. Um you can always farm some extra ones now and then and the chances are you'll get more back anyway. But I want to be as close as I can to be efficient. So if I just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 25 blocks of that tree are going to be despawning over the water, which I'm going to have down the bottom to push it all into a central collection point. I may put that in hoppers if they fix them, I might put it there to test, or they go through the FK portal. So that's more than 100% chance that you'll get your saplings back. So having them this close to each other is uh, efficient. So now we look at how high we can have the next layer because what I want is to have it most compact as I can. So the next layer might be there or so. So now I'm going to look at how tall I can have each layer so that they will grow to the tallest that they can but won't grow to a big tree and they won't deform in any way. So let's do that. And here we are. Testing is complete and what I've done is just replicate what would happen in the farm so basically there'd be a row of them doesn't matter how I lay these out in what grid formation or anything like that I'm going to have saplings on top of that so I've put down rows of the different heights and as you can see this was left for about 14 hours not even joking and this one's a 5 high one don't spawn at all then we go to 6 high they took a wild spawn and then 7 high they were quicker then we go around, so this one's 8 over here, 9, and then we start getting deformed trees. So if it's looking here, I had to check already, you'll see that you start to get leaves branching outwards. And I thought that was a deformed tree. Maybe not. What I meant by a deformed tree is when they just start bridging out of the sides. I had one over there a minute ago. But that looks okay actually. I wonder if any of these are like that. Oh yeah, this one is the one. There we are. You get this sort of height and it starts to grow strangely because it wants to grow to a bigger tree and it just grows out the sides. So you get random pieces of wood which are going to stop your leaves from despawning and also lose you some leaf blocks. So that would ultimately slow me down. So I can't go that high because I know that they would definitely grow that big um, on the off chance. I don't know about this height and um, they may grow to that. But with this farm, once I've set up the base area with the water, I can easily adjust how far apart the layers are. They're only soil and pumpkins or glowstone if I do that. I probably have enough glowstone to do that as well. I might do that. Or I might make a pattern with them. I don't know. Depends how much time I have today. And with these, they're okay. As you can see, there's one gap here. They seem to like having a one airspace above them. So as you can see here, that's really obvious there. They won't grow any higher than that, unless they have some sort of strange thing going on like this one. So most commonly, they will grow to the maximum height minus one block. So in theory, this one will be better, um, because this height, they're generally one block higher than these ones. So you get one more piece of wood per tree. And when you've got maybe 100 trees in the thing, that's another stack and a half of wood blocks. So that could be worth it. And I think I will build it this high. This one should be 7 high? No, that one's 7. This one's 8 high. I think I'm going to try 8 high then. And what I want to do is make it so that I have a fun way of doing this. I don't want to be sitting here and doing sort of a standard one that I've seen before where you sort of go up to one layer and you knock all the trees down and then you go up to the next layer and you knock the next trees down and you keep climbing up and down. I want to make a sort of tree helter-skelter and basically that means that I want to start at the top, I'll either climb up or end up up right at the top 
and then I will just cut trees, go down, cut trees, go down, and just keep going down, 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 and then finish at the bottom. Pick up some saplings and go back up the top and replant them on the way down. And if you really wanted to, you could then grab some bone mill and then bone mill them on the way down and then start it all over again. But these are designed so that I can just leave them. I probably only harvest them every few days or so if I need the wood. So they have plenty of time to grow. I'm not bothered about them being slow to grow as long as they do grow, unlike these ones. So I'm going to go now and set up a water area for this and work out rough dimensions of how I want to do this because really I don't want ladders and things to go up and down little layers like I said I really want the layers to change as I do them so say I started oh, like this over here actually so I started cutting down the top here and then I'll just keep cutting keep cutting and then it will drop down keep cutting keep cutting go around the corner and drop down again and so on so in theory it would be like this all the way down but if I'm having an 8 gap between them then I have to drop down eight times or have sort of four drops of two so I'm going to work out how to do that and then I'll work out if I want a square or a rectangle formation these are really important things for an aesthetic build like this I <laughs> believe me it takes me a lot of time to think of these things so I'm going to do some toying with that and then I'm going to clear up some of the area and what we're going to do is put in the water today and we're not going to finish off the bottom of it because I need to decide what to do about that. I'll just put in the waterways so that I can clip the stuff. And we'll set up the general formation of this. So I'll see you on the server, <laughs> server on the Let's Play, when I'm ready to show you. Here we are. This is the base. And I did say I was going to set up the water first, but I've decided not to. I'm going to do it the other way around. And this frame looks awesome. It looks like something out of FTB, but even nicer. The colours are absolutely awesome. I love the contrast between them. And the half slabs now that we can make are awesome. So, also on that point, now that we can make the nether bricks, um, I did make some, I wondered if we can make nether fences, because nether fences are always in short supply. And I'd love to be able to craft some of them. But anyway, that's a side note. So I've built up a distance, I've just picked a random distance, I don't know if it's going to be the right distance, just picked a distance upwards, and I've got a 30 by 30 square, that is meant to be 30 by 30, and inside I've got a 24 by 24 square. So this 24 by 24 square is where the rows of trees are going to be, and it means that when they start to disperse and the leaves drop off, then there's three spaces either side between the water edge and the actual trees for the things to fall down on. Now they may go even further but hopefully most of them should come into that three wide gap and I do have a gigantic hole in the middle when I do this. I may put something else in there at some point or even put more trees there but for the moment I think I'm going to have plenty enough trees on the outside and space is not a worry. No, I've got all this world I can fill up with a pretty tree farm. So I'm going to start off with one of the layers and as you can see down here it starts where that chest end is so if I just line myself up and so the first block would be here yep that's the first block and then I'm going to go modules all my farms are modular so this is going to be called a tree module just one glowstone and one piece of dirt and so one module two three four and I'm going to go up one and this is actually quite important how it's laid out I was doing this creative and I come up with a way to make trees go really easily and get myself to be able to go on one walk instead of going up and down ladders the whole time so it goes up one here and then we're going to go another four so one two three and four and I'm going to keep going along until it gets to the corner so again one two three four and now I'm on this corner so on the very corner here is a glowstone now I'm going to start with trees so each of these dirt blocks can have a tree on it and the light is to stop more spawning and also you need them for the light anyway for the trees to grow so that goes up to that side and I'm doing that every single way around so in the middle they go up to 
when I come down I'm just going to be digging down this way digging you know what I mean so each of these corners are flat so there's nothing stopping a tree if it's here if there's a block there then it won't want to grow as much or won't grow at all so doing it this way it means that the trees will always grow and the ones that are here have got a space next to them so they'll grow as well so it should all work out pretty well and I'm just going to keep going all the way around like this I'll do a few layers and I'll show you how it looks okay so the first layer is done and it's starting to take shape as you can see it's going to be a nice spiral going all the way up I probably will make it as high as that just for looks now I can always start up halfway and then just work my way down I don't have to cut them all down every single time so at the moment I've just got a way up here which in the end will be the way down so once I've finished my cutting run I can just come down here or I could just I could even cut up here if I want to but then it's the jumping up each time so when I come down I can come down cutting them all and then come down here there'll be some chests in the middle hopefully when I funnel it all down to the middle I've got to work out how to do that quite nicely and then there'll be some chests in the middle which I can pick up the saplings and then I can either go all the way back to the top and then replant them coming down or I can just go back up the ladder and plant them again advantage is that I could actually go back up to the top now afterwards come back down replanting them going yeah going back up replanting them grabbing some bone meal walking back this way bone meal and more and then come back down again and <laughs> harvest them again but I don't think I need to do that much wood so this is how it's going and it's looking rather nice for me it is a bit weird that down there say um, there's a big gap between where the water would be and the bottom of this because there isn't a previous layer underneath this I could extend that bit down here a bit but I think I'll have plenty of trees anyway in this I just think there's 12 aside and there's 48 per layer so assuming that gives 4 logs uh, per one that's rather a lot to begin with so I've just been going around and I've also been putting in some light sensors um, just along here but they don't seem to be working so I really hope they fix that in the next snapshot all those lamps have got sensors on them but at the moment they're only active when they're in day which is bizarre that's not how it's meant to be working I don't think and if it is then that's weird so hopefully they'll fix that soon as well as the hoppers um, new snapshot may be out by the time this comes out actually maybe not quite so one two uh, three four I'm just going to keep going up and I will say that I did make the whole bit the whole bottom a bit bigger and I was slightly off in my dimensions of what I actually wanted so a little adjustment there I think it's 32 square now probably anyway you can build it however you want if you want to do it yourself all personal preference there we are so I'm just going to keep going now and I'll get up to about there it won't take me very long and then I'll get back to you once I've planted them and then we'll look how to do our ice streams to then get the stuff down to the middle because that's what's going to look pretty good so be back when the trees are planted and here we go it's starting to look pretty cool don't know how it look with the trees in it but we will see and I've extended this bit along the side here I wanted to keep going so I came back to the same point so what I'm going to do is put a ladder on this bit here going down to that path there so I can just finish my run then come straight back up and replant I think it should be quite nice so I'll see you now when they're all planted so back in a sec okay so I planted all the trees that I had in the base I'm sure I've got more at spawn but I only got the ones in the base uh, it was two stacks and an 11 set I think and I've done just over half I guess maybe two thirds mm, more like three fifths anyway and so I'm going to go cut them down now and just have a look at how many spawns I get back from that because I know how many put, uh, put into it and not all of them have grown so I'm not really too bothered I've put in this extra bit here to stop uh, the trees to grow from big ones this is the same gap as they are down there and I think they may actually go through um, half slabs they may ignore them I may need to get them full blocks but let's just say they can't spawn 
I could always turn to ice or glass or something if I really want to or even just like glowstone and do the same patterns down here but I want to finish at the same point I started so that's good and I've got this nice way down as well if I ever want to come down uh, for any reason that's a nice safe way down and it doesn't look too bad from the outside so I'm going to cut these trees down and get back to you with how many saplings I have and then we can look well I might actually be able to fill up the rest of the farm if I cut them all down and I can always go down quickly just by going in and out of the layers but hopefully it will be full most of the time <laughs> I hope but now we're going to work on the water layers now I want to keep it as high up as I can for the water without it uh, being inefficient well, it doesn't need to be super efficient as long as the things get down to the collection point eventually I'm not going to be in a massive rush as long as they <laughs> do it for the despawn timer and yeah, that looks okay now, oh, we've got silk touch on probably not the best thing to test with a silk touch I'll probably want to make a nice axe I've got a number in here there, yeah, we'll use that one, that's better and try and fix it up probably and probably get a diamond one so I just came down a row there so I should be able to keep walking forward and the positives must be you don't lose any hunger by doing this well you may have you swing your axe I guess I don't really pay that much attention but there's no jumping up and down well there's down anyway so I'm gonna get back to you once I've cut all these down as you can see it looks pretty easy I've not done this before in practice just a bit of a nice little bit of testing always test once you finish your project Philip it's good like that so this is pretty good I'll get back to you when this is done here we are trees are in place I've still got a few more to put down I found some more saplings over there but I'm still probably I don't know a third of a stack left to do but it looks pretty good and even with the different leaf cover the colour then uh, over the jungle, I still think it looks quite nice with the dirt colour. I don't know what it looked like back in my texture pack, but I think it looks pretty nice. And this, I love this down here. It doesn't really fit the colour scheme with this lot, but from here you can't really change the colours because that's the minimum blocks you can do. Down here I could change the little posts. I don't know, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. But I'll show you what I've done put in this glass here now this bit doesn't have derp that bit doesn't have to be glass I just made it glass anyway this bit over here does because I've got the lighting above that which would melt it that's a spare piece of glass I was yeah I've still got to use those ones I'm trying to gauge where the middle is and there's an odd number in the middle so this is the middle point now what I've got to do is get all the items to a middle point got a nice one wide hole here and the items go out to put up and show you the water comes across so it's just the right size just to come here but now what I want to do is place these and I've got to do it in such a way that I want all the items to go into them and then go into the middle now I want two sets of chests because you can do this and it just means you can have lots of chests like that and basically if you put something in there if it doesn't fit in here straight away then it will move downwards to the bottom one as you can see there's a whole load here and it won't duplicate if you throw it in that bit it might duplicate if you throw it in the top from the tree farm but I'd have to bear that for the next day or so for the next snapshot to come out um, I don't really want to be involved with that sort of thing so what I want to do is make it so that if they'll come through to single chests I know they're meant to be expanding this so that when the hopper comes down and it goes into the back of one chest and there's a chest say whoop, not like that that's definitely the right thing they said when there's double chest then they're meant to be going into the whole chest rather than oh, it's actually in here rather than just one side of the chest they said it was a bug so we should see this if an item comes into here then it can fill up the whole of the double chest and then move downwards so what I'm going to do is have a water chest looking that way and a water chest looking that way half of the flow of trees and everything else will go into one side and half will go into the other and then if they add the double chest thing then I can just make it a bit bigger just ease the flow a bit 
But to do this, I've got to work out the middle point, which I have over here, which I'm going to put as a piece of cobble, I think, at the moment. To make sure I've got this right. I had to change this water flows a lot actually to make it what I wanted. So that's the middle. And I've got to have two hoppers here that come down. So let's see if I can get this right. I want a chest here. This is uh, quite complicated. So one chest there. And then I want one chest there. And then into them I have hoppers. Okay, so everything comes along into there. And then into them I want hoppers. So I've got to keep placing these on top of them by shift clicking. Which is a bit annoying while we're doing this. So if let's keep doing that, you'll see that they angle into them. So that all the stuff that comes down here will go into this first hopper, move to the next one, and then keep going down into the chests. So I've got to do that for both sides. And the middle one, I'm just going to point at either one of the two rows of chests. It's just an easier way of doing that. So I get that done, I'll be back with you. That looks pretty good. I will be honest. I'm really liking it. I haven't even filled in all the saplings, but that's most of them. And most of them have grown already, which is really quick actually. Um, very good conditions for them growing. So what I was doing, I was planting them, and as I was planting them, they were already growing, which was <laughs> a bit crazy. But it means that I can obviously plant them again, and then just harvest after a few minutes, rather than waiting a while. So that's a bit better than I expected. And I like how it looks. And I hope you do too. The water's all done in here, so they all come into these hoppers and then they move downwards into the middle. I've left them door open. Um, basically, if you fall down, then you can just walk through there. It's easier than fighting against the stream. I'm sure some items will come down the middle and come down this one. Only stuff from that slice. So there's a few possible ones that come down there, but meh. They would come down here in time. I could just come and collect them and put them in a box. And otherwise I can just angle another hopper into one of them. There's no really issue with that. But I put my chest here and hopefully they'll change this for next time so I just it wouldn't really be that much of importance. But it's there at the moment so I can use it. But I don't think I'll be using it until the next snapshot, just in case it starts duplicating wood and things like crazy. Because when I harvested about half of it um, I've got a chest in here of the wood I got from that. There we are. So that wood was just from half of it. So that's quite a lot of wood in one go. So it's basically getting a whole single chest with a whole farm ish. I'm not going to count it exactly. That's what you expect to get. So you only need to harvest it now and then, I guess. Which is brilliant. And I think that brings us to the end of the episode. Next time. I'm finishing planning my gold farm and we're going to build the gold farm next time. I've decided on a design which is different from the concept one. The concept one was only really showing off that you could use the hopper instead of taking them through a portal or moving them around because that was annoying me. Also means you can build the gold farm anywhere in the nether now. You don't have to build it over the spawn or anything like that which is going to be awesome. I can use my original space that I was going to have it for um, above where the portal is here in the, in the nether anyway, on top and yeah, that should be really cool actually next time so we'll have good fun planning that and finishing the design and yeah, that does bring us to the end and just a note that as I'm doing the FTP now at the moment as well I really need to see what people want to watch now I'm doing this for fun, it's a hobby I <laughs> don't make any money basically it's uh yeah so no, I want to do things that I enjoy and I really enjoy all of it at the moment I'm really enjoying vanilla this sort of thing has given me much more satisfaction than FTP has but FTP is more fun for little things and um, learning stuff I'm still learning it some people wanted me to do a sort of a basic um, tutorial to start off FTP uh, a few videos on that. I don't know how you guys feel about that. But yeah, on the FTB and this, if you do enjoy the series, then do please give it a thumbs up and all that, and support it. 
and then I can try and work out how I can do my splits of episodes if I spend more time on one than the other um, per week kind of episode worth I'm trying, I really am, so if you appreciate that I'd love to know and as always I read every comment and a lot of people get shocked that I uh, reply very quickly to comments and that's because yep I still have emails on for them and uh, brighten up my day when I comment through which is nice so yeah thank you very much for joining me guys say goodbye to the tree farm and I'll see you next time